identified in some pictures online. You have your teen violence mm -hmm. website, but we haven't heard of them being arrested. Are there more arrests coming? So we've, all the arrests that we've talked about prior, those arrests have been made. Now there's additional arrests that could be made and some of the photos that we still have up there of victims we are trying to identify and locate. If and when we can identify and, and interview them, we have uh, suspects named in those cases and okay. so we could make additional arrests on those cases but we are still working on identifying and locating those uh, victims so we can interview them. Yeah, so it's been reported that you had hundreds of calls at the in and out here in Gilbert. What have you guys been doing to make sure that people feel safe when they go there? First, to clarify the, the quantity of, of cases that we had at, you know, at the In-N-Out, we had four documented assaults at the In-N-Out in a four-year time period. The calls that we had at In-N-Out, what we have now, based on the information we received after Preston Lord was killed with the videos, a lot of those fight videos that we saw were not available to us prior to Preston Lord's death. After the, the, his death, we were uh, in receipt of those via social media, the media, and uh, people sending those to us. And we were able to sort through those. And from those, we've got five additional cases of assaults at the in and out that occurred. But again, those weren't reported to us prior. You have to also keep in mind that that in and out is, is in a very popular, very busy location. It's right next to the mall, right next to the freeway. It's one of the locations that's open late. And so we've always been aware that the teenagers congregate there. And so we've been very proactive throughout the years of making sure that they know we're there, we're being visible, quickly responding to calls. And in those calls that you mentioned, the majority of those, um, a lot of the teen calls didn't involve violence. Uh, mm -hmm. Teens hanging out. Um, sometimes uh, adults being disruptive and teens were involved, but I wanted to make sure it was very clear to the community and to the media of everything we had that involved the teen and so that you could see what we were dealing with and the majority of them weren't crimes. What would you say to, I know one of the suspects that was in one of your police reports that was interviewed said there were fights going on there summer 2023 all the time and nothing was done. And I, I think that, uh, to clarify, I believe that was from uh, the December 22 case, if I remember it, correctly. Um, the interview was from about the August okay. case. Okay, so uh, in the August case, I can tell you based on the reports that we had, we had four documented assaults at the in and out What we know now is that we had, as I mentioned, five additional assaults that occurred. So in those, in those cases where fights or uh, disruptions are occurring, we weren't always notified. You know, as I mentioned, we yeah. try being proactive, we try being there as much as possible. But in cases where um, violence occurs and no one calls us, we don't know about it. So we can't investigate yeah. and, and, and hold people accountable. But in those situations, that's why I mentioned December, because uh, the ones that we had in December where we made arrests on, there was information about um, additional assaults, but those, again, were not reported to us. Yeah. So do you think that fights were going on all the time and you weren't hearing about them? Could that be a possibility? It's possible, and to clarify though, what we're seeing, what we saw in Gilbert, we've been seeing throughout the East Valley. Um, unfortunately, we've seen teen violence throughout the county and throughout the nation. When you look online, you see social media feeds, it's fight after fight um, throughout the country, teens and young adults, uh, and just senseless. And so Gilbert's no different in, in what we were seeing, and, but what we have learned um, from our teen violence cases, and let me go back a little bit to kind of get perspective of the teen violence cases. We were in, from 22 uh, to 23, we responded to an average of about 16,000 calls per month. Of those 16,000 calls per month, on average, less than one call Per month was related to group teen violence. And so in those cases, um, we know now differently than what we knew back then prior to yeah. Preston Lord's death. Once those videos were provided to us, we were able to uh, identify that this group known as the Gilbert Goons was involved in some of these and we're still uh, looking into that investigation to identify their involvement. But that information that was provided uh, via the, the media and, and the tips that was not provided to us before. And to get to your point of the question, we found in reviewing those cases and talking to the victims, there was a reluctance to come forward. They feared reprisals, they feared retaliation. But the important thing for our community to know is if a crime is not reported to us, they're more than likely going to reoffend. And so we need uh, those crimes to be reported to us. We will work with our community and with our victims to protect them. In terms of the Gilbert Goons, how many attacks 
can you tie to that? So that investigation is still ongoing. I know everyone's waiting for that last piece of the, piece of the puzzle, and we are uh, making progress on that case, and that is still an active investigation. And the conclusion of that, we will be able to, as much as possible, relay that information to the community. Because I know in some court cases, prosecutors have said in court and in police reports that these people are part of a group affiliated with several violent attacks here in the East Valley area. So if they're calling them a group, you know, in court, in police reports, I mean, how long does it take to figure out what they are or who's a part of it? Yeah, and, and the big question is whether we can be classified as a, a criminal street gang. So um, regardless of whether they're a criminal street gang, there are groups of individuals that are committing assaults regardless of if they're a criminal street gang or not. Out of our cases involving group teen violence, there are several cases that um, for all indication is they have nothing to do with this group that we've named, uh, that, that has been identified as Gilbert Goons. And so in those cases, it's not, we're not just looking at Gilbert Goons, we're looking at all group teen violence cases and looking for any associa associations between all of the individuals involved and holding them accountable for what they've done. So would you be comfortable to say that there was a group in Gilbert that was carrying out attacks on teens in and around the East Valley? So I, th I think the videos uh, lead that to an obvious conclusion that there were individuals in Gilbert, in the East Valley, Chandler, Pinal County, Queen Creek, that had been committing uh, violent crimes. Um, the association of those individuals, that is what we are investigating. That's what our uh, investigation will determine of who is involved with that name, if anyone, and it, it can it be established as a criminal street gang. But you, you've seen several people that have, are in repeat videos, so obviously they, they have committed multiple. Pinnell County deputies said that Jacob Pennington kind of self-proclaimed that he was part of the Gilbert Goons. Have you had, had any suspects do that? So I'll hold that for our, the release of our gang investigation. I, I saw what you're referencing to when they made that arrest in Pinal County, and I saw what was publicly available. But beyond that, um, uh, we'll wait until that investigation is complete. Okay. Yeah, that, that notion that people are going to be threatened or there's going to be retaliation, I mean, that's documented in so many different reports. Mm -hmm. How do you make those people feel safe? How do you, how do, you do that? So as I mentioned, for first, we talked about one a couple of weeks ago, um, we need to be notified. Uh, we, one of our cases that we had a delayed notification, in addition to that, they notified us that um, after the assault had occurred, the people came to the house to intimidate or threaten yeah. them. And in that case, that wasn't reported to us either. And so it's important to re first report to the police department. But we have resources available between legal processes, injunctions against harassment, orders of protection. Um, but that information is critical for us. We need to know if there's a threat or if there's any intimidation, because then we can relay that to the court. So even if we've made an arrest, for one, it's another crime, depending on what they do. Um, but additionally, we can re relay that information to the prosecutor's office, and as it goes through trial, uh, and upon conviction that that can be used to help enhance the sentence based on the, their behavior throughout the incident. The cries for your resignation have gotten loud at times. What's your response to that? Are you going to resign? I understand people's frustration. You know, as I mentioned before, as this information came out, a lot of information came out very quickly after the Preston Lord, uh, after he was killed. And I understand that frustration and people are looking for answers. And obviously, as the head of the department, uh, they look to me for, for answers. And, and I understand their frustration. Um, we, once we received these cases, we quickly got on all, all of the cases and we've made arrests in those cases. And prior to Preston Lord's death, as I mentioned before, we were actively working all of those cases. So I understand their frustration, um, but I want to assure them that our department is a good department and we have thoroughly investigated these and we will continue to investigate crimes that were reported to us. And to answer your question, no, I'm not resigning. Uh, we will continue to support our community and provide for the safety of our community. What's your message to the community as they digest you know, all of this information that they've learned over the last few months and particularly the last week? Yeah, um, as I started with, you know, talking about Preston Lord, the, the tragedy of his death and what it took to provide uh, the information to, to law enforcement to successfully bring that to conclusion of making arrests. But as I mentioned, that's, it's still a long process. Um, but relying on the community to come to us, you know, the one thing I want our community to know is that we have a safe community in Gilbert. And the Gilbert Police Department is committed to our partnership with our community members to continue that safety of our, for our residents.